Hello, thank you for putting on this video. Today is September 18th, no, the 19th, 2014. And uh, I posted something on Facebook recently, and much to my surprise, a lot of people seem to have read the thing. And uh, I think I shall read it out loud. <clears throat> Things that happened to my mother. I've been trying to write some fiction on a manual typewriter I found in my house. I write better on a typewriter than on a computer, but since this isn't fiction and I'm not trying for style, I'll just write in haste and post this to Facebook. Sometime in my mid-twenties, I locked myself in the third floor bathroom of the house I grew up in. The door had a broken handle. It was about eleven in the morning. I went in, shutting the door, did whatever it was I had gone there to do, and turned the handle. It spun and spun. I couldn't push it open. I had no knowledge of how to jimmy it open. I paced around, sat on the edge of the tub, tried the door handle again, etc. There was no one else in the house. I decided to do what I used to do when I was eight or so. I was agile at eight. Now I was twenty-six or so. I opened the window over the toilet, stuck my head out, Looked left and up and saw the old pipe which I used to use as a grip. When I was eight and my parents were out of the house, my brothers and I used to chase each other to the roof and bound around. Our friends joined us. One of our friends got stung by a bumblebee while standing on the very top of the roof. He swayed but didn't let the pain cause him to fall. Our neighbor, pulling in her station wagon once, saw us, and after persuading us she wouldn't report us if we just went back inside, reported us. Anyway, now I was alone, a man in his mid-twenties, damned if he'd sit stuck in a third-floor bathroom all day until someone came home. I gripped, the <clears throat> I gripped that slippery metal pipe. God knows what effluvia had adhered to it through the decades. I pulled myself out of the window. Using the pipe I had gripped as a footrest, I slid, like the Grinch, to the pinnacle. I slid then, like the somnambulist in Dr. Caligari, toward a little drop which led to one of the sun porches. This was scary. For fifteen minutes I sat, looking at how far I'd have to drop. Then I thought about having to sit there and how intolerable it was. I dangled my feet over the edge, held onto the shingles, and dropped my damn self to the porch. I landed on my side and was glad storm windows hadn't fallen off and shattered. All I had buried in my skin after this drop were bits of hardened tar and pin needle, pine needles. It wasn't much of an effort to drop from the sun porch to the kitchen stoop, but I had to watch out for the rusty rake leaning there. So, you were wondering why I have called this things that happened to my mother. Well, after climbing into the first floor window, after dropping to the stoop, it being that the kitchen door was locked, I went to my room, got my car keys, <clears throat> went back downstairs, out the kitchen door, and into my car. I was able to go to town and the little record stores I haunted, it was a Sunday, and th through my usual Sunday routines. But all that day I wondered whether I should tell my mother that I'd climbed onto the roof and dropped down. Why would I wonder if I should do that? Well, when I finally mentioned it, just before supper at seven or so, my mother got a dismayed look in her eyes. You shouldn't have done that, she said flatly. Most mothers of twenty six year <clears throat> most mothers of twenty six year old men who tell them they had to climb out of the locked third floor bathroom to the roof in order to get out would express some humorous concern. They might say, You could have broken your neck. But my mother's look of dismay confirmed my fear. Let me tell you about some of the things that happened to her. Sometime in her mid-twenties, when she was living in one of the cities she'd live in, she was walking along the sidewalk. She heard a great popping sound behind her. She turned around. A man was sprawled on the sidewalk, dead. A crowd gathered. He had jumped out a window. He hit the pavement just as she walked past. I have nothing more about this anecdote. She told me the story when I was about nine. She'd be driving, doing shopping. My brother and I would be in the car, and Mom would make observations about the people we were driving past. We'd go for a snack. She'd say, That fellow in the diner reminds me of this weird little man I used to buy newspapers from in Chicago. Or, That woman with the little dog reminds me of a woman in our old apartment building. She put do doilies on her dog's feet whenever she'd walk it, and she always put a diaper on the dog. A diaper, I'd say. Oh, yes, like you'd put on a baby. Why? She was crazy. 
Actually, I remember the diaper on the dog lady. She was one of the first adults I ever encountered. I liked how nice she was to her dog, but I can't deny she went too far with its hygiene. Anyway, my mother generally didn't elaborate much on horrific stories she put in our heads. It was the everyday weirdness she described in great detail. But here's another reason I hesitated to tell my mother I'd let myself drop off our roof. When she was 19 or 20, my mother told us, she worked as a waitress in the mountains. It was just after World War II. She wanted to be an actress. She was in summer stock. No actress worth her salt doesn't starve, so she worked in a resort. She had great stories about the two waiters who got into such arguments that one day one tripped the other as he carried massive, a massive tray of lobster dinners. The whole dining room looked up as scores of plates and trays crashed. The waiter who'd been trapped slide, tripped, sliding across the floor. There was the cook who stirred giant pots of soup and flicked cigarette ashes in each one. And there was the owner who felt ill and had my mother read him passages from the Bible by his bedside. One day, with my mother several feet away, he took a gun and shot himself in the head. My mother had to clean it up. She told me and my brother that. We were ten and twelve, I think. I know nothing more about that story.